Welcome to another video. My name is Michael Cosmos. In this video, we are going to be covering land assembly. Land assembly is the process of taking two or more plots of land, combining them to create a bigger plot for a larger development. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the land assembly deals I've been involved in, but also how you can find land assembly opportunities and how to negotiate with the landowners and ultimately make money from the process. Okay, just a quick disclaimer, for you to really be good at land assembly or the understand the process a bit better, you really need to do some homework on planning and get an understanding of what is the planning process uh, within your local area or the area you're looking to work in. Planning is simply is the authorization you get from a local authority to build uh, a structure uh, within any given plot of land. Uh, this also has to do with the local plan. This is a local plan is the allocation of land uses within that area. In the United States, they call it zoning. In the UK, we call it land allocation, whereby the local authority will allocate what that land can be used for. So certain pieces of land can only be used for industrial, residential, uh, or offices. So there is no point in you looking uh, at a development land in a place where it is zoned or it is allocated for offices because it will be so difficult to pass it through planning. Not impossible, but it will be a difficult process. So once you understand planning and zoning, you are in a better place to do better land assembly deals. So first of all, when you are looking for land assembly opportunities, always start with the end in mind. Do you have a brief as a developer if you are going to be developing these sites yourself? If you are a residential single family home developer, you would then uh, be looking for plots that will give you the type of product you're looking for. But maybe if you're a city center developer or you're working with a city center developer, you now go into the town centers and into high density areas and find areas where you can and develop or put together a number of plots to develop a bigger building. To find uh, land assembly development opportunities, you can also do this by uh, looking online. So let's just look at this particular map here. As you can see, by looking at it, you can see that there are a number of gaps that appear within the development. So let's look at this. Looking at this stream here, River Witcham, it shows me that there are potential possibilities here on the riverfront where we could potentially have additional housing. But you also have to consider if this river ever floods, if it has those issues, then it might not be suitable. But otherwise, even beyond that, if I look a bit further here down the map, you can actually see uh, by Belton Avenue that there is a back area of this particular residential uh, setting that has a lot of gaps and this type of opportunity lends itself to uh, to land assembly because a number of owners who own these properties might have backyards that stretch into this plot here and you could actually then engage them and bring them together to sell bits of their land, create a driveway that will come through this section and actually have a few more houses that could be inserted here. So this is using the basic Google map. But if you want to take it another level, I would recommend there is a, a platform called Land Tech, which I use and I think it's much better. Uh, the great thing about this is that they can show you plot sizes as well as in terms of ownership marks across a given area. So if we were to zoom in uh, in this area here, we can actually see who owns what part and uh, how big their plot is. And it actually allows you straight away to actually understand where the opportunities may lie. You can actually find out who owns which plot by simply clicking on a plot that you have identified and you can click further and purchase the title deeds which will provide you the contact information of the person who owns that plot of land. You can also uh, maybe look at planning applications. 
which is another great feature, you can see what people in the area have submitted in terms of planning applications. And this will also give you an indication of what the council and the local authority is allowing to be developed within those areas per se. Uh, furthermore, you can uh, look at property information. Uh, this is all useful data that is provided on the one platform. Um, and you can actually do a lot of deals without leaving your house because you can identify where the gaps are and where the large back gardens are. Let's say if we look at these houses in particular. Remember, we were looking at this section in the Google map, uh, but here I can clearly see that there are more uh, kind of uh, back areas within this house um, that could be explored and you can see how many owners you're dealing with potentially and also you can even see how much the land values are or the property prices are because you can go into the comparable section and see if there are any property prices in the local area that will give you a bit of a guide and a stare of how much you might have to pay for. Uh, in this area, it doesn't uh, look like there's a lot of data available on sales, but in other areas, you will be able to identify this. So definitely, I would recommend you look at a land, uh, land tech or land insight. They have a great platform that will allow you to find land assembly opportunities. The link is below in my description of this video and you can look at it um, and actually uh, subscribe to their platform if you're really interested in uh, exploring land opportunities through uh, land assembly. So behind me is just an example of one land assembly uh, deal that I've been involved with. You're looking for underdeveloped plots of land and buildings. So when I talk about underdeveloped, there are two things you're, you're primarily looking out for. You're looking out for something that has been underdeveloped by the height or by the coverage. So behind me, you can clearly see it is underdeveloped in both aspects in terms of the height in relation to the other buildings around it but also in terms of the coverage within this whole plot you can see there's a substantial areas that do not have coverage in terms of the building within the plot itself so straight away something like this lends itself for perfect land assembly opportunity but there is only one issue with this site. So behind me, you have seven houses which are potentially part of this land assembly. As you can see, uh, these are residential houses. Some people live in them, some of them are empty. Uh, so same thing, you have different level of motivations in terms of selling. Some people will be willing to sell, but other people might have lived here for 10 years and they're not willing to sell. So in addition to the houses, you have three landowners on the main island. So you have this cash and carry, which is an operating business, and you have a scrap yard, which is just beside it, and then you have a derelict piece of land, which is not being used. So all of those three owners have different motivations and different requirements. So the job is trying to come up with a negotiating approach that interests both of them and also that reflects the land value of what they are currently using the land for. And that's where the, the art of the deal comes in and your ability to bring those parties together. The next stage is contacting the landowners. And this can be done in a number of different ways. You can simply write to them, you can knock on the doors before you even start offering prices or how much you're willing to buy it for, just get a feel of where are they? Are they open to an offer? That's the step that gives you an indication if there's a deal to be made. Now that you have identified a plot of land and you have established contact with the landowners, uh, if you are the developer and you will be the one responsible responsible for building out the proposed development, yes, you then go and do your development appraisal and come to a figure that you can value the land. But otherwise, if you are not going to be building and you're going to be passing this on as an agent, 
to another developer or a bigger developer, the key thing is, is to invite the developer at this stage because you don't want to be negotiating a price for a proposed development because you are not going to be the developer because every developer we have their own specifications, we have their own uh, requirements in terms of margins that they are willing to get into a deal and they will also have their proposed height and number of units for that plot. So what you do not want to do is assume what they would do with the plot. So to do that, you need to get into a non-disclosure agreement with them as well as agree a fee before you disclose the full site. So how you do that, you can give them an idea of where the plot of land is and how big it potentially is. And then if they are interested in that, you can say you can pay me maybe 2% uh, or 2.5% introductory fee for whatever you will buy that plot of land for or for whatever fee that you feel is necessary. But if you do not know any developers, find a land agent and you can share the fee together because they can then introduce the plot to developers that they work with who can come on the table and you can introduce them to the landowners and you then follow the deal to see where the deal will actually materialize into a, into a purchase by that developer and it is at that point you would then make your money when the deal is closed. As you can see from the images that I'm going to put on the screen, uh, this is the proposed development that we could have potentially achieved on the site. Uh, this is more or less triggered by the building behind, which gives you an indication of height and the height that could be allowed within this local area. And you can really see that there is a substantial underdevelopment of this island and you could build out uh, and actually use more square footage of the plot itself, which allows you to actually then uplift the value and the density of that area. So, so yeah, it's a, it was an interesting project trying to work with all the different stakeholders to push this through. Uh, this is the biggest number of stakeholders I've worked with on one site. Uh, otherwise, I will probably say if you are starting out, maybe look at one or two, three uh, landowners at the very most because it becomes very complicated when you're dealing with more than three individuals on one uh, development site that you're trying to uh, pull through. Behind me is an example of another land assembly job we recently were involved in for a client. As you can see, uh, the building beside it is the trigger which shows you how much mass the local authority will allow a building to be built around this area. And behind me, you can see that this building here, it is a derelict building, but first of all, it is underdeveloped in terms of its height as well as its coverage. If you kind of walk with me, you can easily see that as you walk by that this building here, is actually um, the it is the benchmark uh, of what you can potentially build on this plot. But furthermore, because when a plot is at the end, if it's at the end of the road, it potentially could even go a bit higher than the other buildings which are within the the, the road per se. So for this site, you actually have three plots that you are looking to put together to build the proposed building uh, as you can see from the pictures from the CGI's. Uh, you have uh, two landowners, so one landowner owns two of the plots and then the other one is owned by uh, another company that is looking to get out of the holding that they have. You're only looking at two individuals, one who was already a motivated seller and the other landowner is not doing much with their building. So in this kind of case, it's easier to negotiate a deal because you have motivated sellers and you can move it along quite quickly.